Hello everyone, Dave Landry here from DaveLandry.com. This is Trading Simplified. So what are we talking about? Well, for the methodology in action, I don't have any real updates on my next 100 trade series. But what I do have is a new mystery chart that will go into one of those next 100 trades, provided, of course, that it triggers. And we have a reveal this week, and we'll get to that in just one second. I wanted to shift gears this week and touch upon some market timing things that I'm seeing beginning to unfold. And one of those things is some harbingers of a bottom, and I should put non-price harbingers of the bottom, or mostly non-price harbingers of a bottom. And those are things that I've been noticing lately, and I'll point that out in just one second. Now, the bottom line is there's certain things specifically price-wise that would have to happen for me to become bullish. And I'm going to walk you through those things. And I know in some cases I'm kind of beating a dead horse on some of these things, but I think we need to hear them. And sometimes I actually need to hear them myself and make sure I'm paying attention to these things. And that'll make a lot more sense in a few minutes. If we have time, I want to wrap up the Mind the Trade series on dealing with your brain on trades, but likely we won't. So we'll get to that next week, worst case scenario. By the way, housekeeping, I do take requests. It makes my job a lot easier knowing what I'm going to cover ahead of time. You can send them to davelander.com slash contact. If you want the slides from this presentation and all the other presentations combined, along with a bunch of goodies, including all of my books in PDF format. As I say each week, get to know me first before spending any hard-earned cash. Go to DaveLander.com slash stock charts. If you want to join me live each week, Thursday nights at 7 Eastern Time, DaveLander.com slash webinar. Would love to have you. Bring your questions. Bring your favorite stock picks. And we have a lot of fun on Thursday nights, and that's Dave Landry's The Week in Charts. Register even if the link is old, and you'll be signed up for the next six months or so. Hey, look at that. I got a new tw uh, Twitter handle. This was a little bit better than my old one. You're probably thinking, geez, your old one must have really sucked. <laughs> T following moron, at T following moron. So follow me on Twitter, please, and thank you. So let's talk about the mystery charts and the methodology in action. We have a new mystery chart for this week. It is a short, sell short. There are the parameters, entry, protective stop, IPT. Let's take a look at the chart. You can see pretty serious downtrend intact. Notice that it sells off, pulls back, sells off, pull back, pulls back, and hopefully it rinses and repeats. Notice it's pulled back from its last little accelerated slide. The sector itself is in a pretty serious slide. Entry is here. Protective stop is up here, which gives us an initial profit target of down here. By the way, the spreadsheet you just saw, you can get a working copy of that to punch in your own trades by going to that aforementioned link, davelander.com slash stock charts. So we'll follow along. We'll see what happens. The parameters have shifted a little bit higher on this one since I grabbed this chart because this stock has continued to rally. If it keeps rallying, then no capital will be put into harm's way because it doesn't trigger. Only on triggers do we take a setup. Speaking of which, here's the mystery chart reveal. EGO, these golds, I was bullish on these golds because it looked like they were bottoming, but they didn't follow through to the upside. And this is a good example of that. Here are the parameters or the original parameters, I should say, 635, 535, 735. That seems kind of wide on a percentage basis, but the stock's pretty volatile, and that's what it called for. So we have a big thrust from Lowe's. It's the pattern I call a first thrust. I think it was also a bow tie, and it pulls back. And we were looking to buy this, and it just kept pulling back. And entry was here. Stop was down here. Initial profit target up here. And let's look at what happened. Well, it continues to sell off. It did bounce a little bit. It still looks like a big picture bottom, but it's no longer a setup basis the methodology so let me show you the cup and handle pattern there so again no capital was put in harm's way whenever you have a setup that doesn't trigger so bigger picture wise you can see big picture cup and handle now keep in mind i don't trade off of big picture technical analysis but there are a few things i pay attention to such as double bottoms maybe a head and shoulders top a head and shoulders bottom and cup and handle is probably one of my favorites and the reason I like the cup and handle is because a lot of my patterns fit into the cup and handle 
So as you just saw, you have a first thrust, and then sometimes you have the bow tie, and other transitional type of patterns will set up within this cup and handle. So I trade off of my patterns, and it's nice when something bigger picture is backing me up, but I don't trade off the bigger picture in and of itself. But it still looks like a bottom is in, at least in the works here, but not quite just yet. All right, so as I mentioned earlier in last week's Dave Landry's The Week of Charts, I did a show called Harbingers of a Bottom. And then last minute, I added in mostly non-price Harbingers of a Bottom. So these aren't things you can really time off of, but they are some signs and signals, non-price ones, or mostly non-price ones, I should say, that could hint that we're getting closer to a bottom. And then, as I said earlier, we'll, we'll talk about what it would take for me to get bullish. So I'm just going to give you a brief recap here without hopefully doing the whole presentation over again. And I would encourage you to go watch my YouTube on that. But one thing I'm noticing is these armchair economists are beginning to come out of the woodwork and make predictions. I don't see any improvement until the end of the second quarter next year. I don't get out much, but my wife gets out here and there. Not as much as she used to because the economy has slowed down, obviously. But she had told me just yesterday, somebody else was telling her about exactly when the economy is going to improve, specifically with their business in mind. So I thought that was kind of interesting. By the way, as I said last week in the week of charts, I looked up economists. A person who would tell you tomorrow, why would he predicted yesterday, did not come true today. <laughs> that's a tough job, <laughs> being an economist. The other thing that was kind of shocking to me is I did receive a phone call last week and this individual was in a bit of a panic and she told me that their 401k administrator said you might want to get out of anything S&P related and I found that kind of odd because these guys tend to drink the Kool-Aid that the market always goes up longer term and all you have to do is ride it out and she wanted to know well what does that mean get out of the S&P should I move my money into utilities and I'm like no 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 utilities utilities look absolutely horrible and they're going to be S&P related I'm not sure what this guy meant by S&P related but nearly everything is S&P related there's a high correlation between most stocks and the S&P 500 and that's why I preach so much that you want to have that tide moving in your favor or the wind at your back will choose your favorite metaphor but you want ideally the market bit had to be headed higher when you're buying stocks. Now I'm going to discuss some times when maybe you'll buy stocks even though the market's not headed higher. But as a general statement, you want to trade in the direction of the overall market. Anyway, I thought that was interesting that the the market has sold off enough to begin to scare the buy and hold. And usually this crowd is you have to pry stocks away from them from their cold dead hands. But it's it's interesting that they're beginning to throw in the towel. So that's that could be the beginning of the end of the bear market. Now, the other thing that I find interesting is my phone has started to ring. Nobody calls me when the market is going higher. Nobody calls me when the market drops 10%. And as I preach and told this lady earlier this week or last week, that if a market is going to drop 50%, it's going to drop 10% first. And if it drops 10%, with a few caveats, you might want to seriously think hard about getting out just in case it goes down 50%. So anyway, so there would be no hindsight on my next TFM 10% signal and any other signals that I follow. I decided last summer to do a presentation called Before the Bomb Blows Up. And this was for Trading Simplified, this show that you're watching now. And if you go in and watch the playlist on YouTube, stockcharts.com. YouTube's playlist, you'll see that show. And I wanted to do a show while the market was at new highs and doing well and headed higher so there'd be no questions about the next sell signal for when, not if, the market goes into another bear market. Now, it happened a little bit sooner than I'd hoped, but obviously it did. Now, the other thing is I'm starting to see quite a few gurus calling for a bottom. And these gurus don't want to be they don't want to be too late so what they tend to do is they tend to predict 
early and often. So I think they might be right, but I think they might be a little early. And again, they tend to predict early and often, but they're not going to call for a bottom until there's been quite a bit of damage done, just like my phone doesn't ring from people panicking about their investments until the bomb's already blown up. By the way, this aforementioned lady, she's a little younger than me, obviously a lot younger than me, and I, I always get the question, what's the worst can happen? I said, well, the market could lose 50% or more, more of its value and take 25 years to come back. And most people don't believe me when I say that, or they just kind of turn white <laughs> and they, they don't know what to say next, unfortunately. And in her case, I was a little surprised. She actually seemed somewhat relieved. She said, oh, well, I have 25 years. It's like, okay, well, good for you. What I would suggest you do, though, is when the market starts making new highs again, maybe pay attention to when the market drops 10%. And you can go to StockCharts.com and get free charts that will help you do that. And if you have the ACP platform, which is obviously paid, you could use my TFM 10% system to help you with that. But anyway, so the gurus have been calling for a bottom. The other thing that I'm seeing is the doom and gloomsters are coming out of the woodwork. In 2000, my brother-in-law gave me a book. It was one of those, the coming prosperity type of books. And of course, the market sold off really, 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 really hard. In 2008, I didn't bother, I didn't bother reading the other book because I, I know how these books end. These guys tend to be at the absolute end of a cycle. But I think it was the same guy in 2008 or 2009, or right around the bottom of the market, put out a book about how we're all going to hell in a handbasket. <laughs> and anyway, these guys are coming out now uh, with doom and gloom books. So it could be the beginning of the, of the end of the bear market. Now, those are non-price related. One thing that's sort of price related that you can't really time off of, but it's an interesting phenomenon that does occur, a phenomenon that does occur. And I used to call it a Jackie Mason market, but now... Since my audience is a little younger and I'm getting a little older, I don't think many of you guys and girls knew who that is. So we'll call it an Aussie man market, a little bit more hip, younger guy there. And Aussie man is known for saying, yeah, nah. So if you ever get bored, look up Aussie man. And I think I said this in last week, so we could charge. So I have a neighbor and uh, his tree seems to be dying a slow death. And a limb fell on my roof the other day. And luckily, no damage, but the tree's obviously coming down. I'm like, oh, yeah, we can take it down. And then I watched a, a tree lopping video from Ozzy Man. And uh, I, I began to change my mind. But anyway, it's kind of like uh, he's known for saying, yeah, nah. So on the 13th, obviously, the market gap low. And it just felt ugly. It's like you can almost cut the fear with a knife. And then we had that really, really nice reversal. That was a beautiful day. If I could just sit around and wait for days like that and trade, I would do incredibly Awesome. But anyway, it was nah, and then it was yeah, and then next day with a nice gap up, yeah, nah. And then next day it gaps higher or laps higher in this particular case, yeah, and then nah, and then the end of the day went higher, so yeah. And then again, the gap higher, and then nah, closes much, much lower, but it still closes up fairly significantly. So it's been kind of up and down, up and down, up and down, and that's some sort of action that's hard to quantify or qualify, but it's it's something that you do normally see at bottoms where everybody gets jerked around quite a bit. It, the market tends to suck people in and spit them out. As Linda Rasky once said, and this is quoting just an old Wall Street adage, I believe, the market will do what it has to do to cause the most pain to the most amount of people. So when it's going up and down and up and down like that in that in that Aussie man format or Jackie Mason format. It's up, it's down, it's up, it's down. It tends to shake a lot of people out. Suck them in and shake them out. And it's all part of the purging process. And again, hard to quantify or qualify, but it's something that you could certainly observe. Now, for me to get bullish, what would it take for me to get bullish? Well, I put this little switch in here last minute. I grabbed it off of one of my old columns. And it's not like flipping a switch was one of the points I was making in the column where you just automatically switch from bull to bear, but more of a, a process where you begin to see things happen. And you'll see things on a shorter term front time frame, he tried to say, 
and then longer and longer term time frames. And as we get a little further into this presentation, I'll talk a little bit about how the database can help you. So let's look at our checklist. Number one would be hourly upside Landry Light with a 30 EMA. Now you could choose your favorite EMA. Mine right now is the 30 EMA. Now I have a client, and we'll get to the, the bow ties in one second. But I had a client, and for years, one of the main things that he's been doing with his market timing is looking at hourly charts and specifically the bow ties on his hourly charts, which again, we'll get to in just one second. And that has me looking at some of this intraday stuff. Now, if you go back a couple of weeks and look at Dave Landry's The Week in Charts, you'll see that I, I showed how the exact top of the market, or shortly thereafter, within like a half a day of the top, you had hourly sell signals. Now, that sounds pretty exciting, but before you get too excited, let's not start kissing each other just yet, right? You will get a lot of whipsaws if you're looking down as far down as an hourly chart. But you have to start somewhere. So we do have hourly upside Landry light. For those who aren't familiar, it means the lows are greater than the moving average. I like the 30 EMA. I use the 50-week simple moving average for the TFM system, TFM 10% system that is, and I'll show you that in just one second. Now remember that the Landry light counts the number of bars, not the magnitude. So we've got nine bars of upside Landry light. And today's action is pretty good, so we'll have probably a few more. By the way, I have these little reference lines in here, and you could set them to your liking. But usually around 10 bars is a good place to look to see if the trend might be turning from one direction to the other. And right now, we're, we were at nine bars, at least when I grabbed this slide. And it's going to look a little bit better with today's action in there. Today is October 25th. By the way, we are going to go live. I just need to talk to the my producer. And I need to talk to the, the lead technical guy for the studio. And make sure those guys are ready to go. But I think these shows would be much better, which would be much better live. Anyway, so let's look at upside Landry Light with the 30. Well, that's just starting to happen as of today. I grabbed this slide last minute, and you can see a little green beginning to show up down here. Now, I know the day ain't over yet, but let's just see what happens. At least that's one day. Again, you might want to wait for 10 days or more before looking to position yourself on one side of the market or the other. But again, you have to start somewhere. So we do have one bar of upside Landry Light. What about weekly? No. So the weekly chart, as you can see here, mostly or nearly all, except for one week of downside Landry Light for 2022, maybe a couple of bars earlier in the year before the market sold off. But for the most part, as you can see, year to date, mostly red. And you can see that illustrated down here. We did have one little green bar right there where the market tried to turn around a little, but then it rolled right back over. And by the way, it's good to look at the, the hourlies, as I suggested earlier. And of course, you want to look at the dailies, but sometimes it's good to look at the weeklies to see the forest for the trees. So you look at the hourly, hey, that's looking pretty good. Hey, daily's looking pretty good. But the weekly chart, not quite there yet. Now, you're going to be a little slower to make the turn on a weekly, but a lot of times that's okay. And what the weekly will give you is you realize you're still fighting possibly a longer term trend. But as you'll see in one minute, as you start getting setups, you will become a little bit of a pioneer and look to get in early. Notice that we've been showing a few mystery charts on the upside lately. And fortunately, since the market has rolled over up until recently, those have it triggered and no capital again was put into harm's way. Now, let's talk about proper order. As I explained earlier, one of my clients, he's been a client for years. He likes to look at the hourly bow tie. So he's got me looking at that. And you can see that the hourly bow ties are in uptrend proper order, meaning that the 10 simple is greater than the 20 exponential and the 20 exponential is greater than 30 exponential. So that's certainly a good sign. So we went from yellow, meaning that they're crossing back and forth, to green. Now, notice last time we went from yellow to green, we had that gap opening, but that was pretty much it okay so when you're looking at some sort of and i call them illustrators more than indicators because they just show you what's happening in the chart right 
you want to make sure you do look at the chart. You can see we had that one big gap up, and then the market really didn't follow through from there, even though the proper order was green on the hourly chart. But now you can see we're back to upside, proper order on the hourly, and that's certainly a good thing. So again, other than that big one big day of follow through, not, not a whole lot of follow through since the last crossing back up in those moving averages. Now daily is no bueno so far. You can see we did have our last little daily turn down. Notice that the market went from green to red, a little caution in between, a little yellow in between. And you can see that now the 10 simple is less than the 20 exponential and the 20 exponential is less than the 30 exponential. And like the Landry light, this just counts a number of bars and it gives you a great graphical representation of how long you've been in that downtrend. So for 35 days, these moving averages have been in downtrend proper order. Now, don't just look at the indicator or illustrator, also look at the price, okay? We're at 4,300 and we sell down to 3,500 and right now we're around 3,800. So you can see this is less than that. So far downtrend on a net net basis remains intact. But again, downtrend proper order for quite some time. Now, you'll notice that the moving averages are beginning to turn up. An exponential moving average will turn up as soon as price closes above it. Greg Morris taught me that. It's just math. It doesn't matter whether it's a 10 day or a thousand day, exponential moving average, it will turn up. Simple moving averages take a little while longer, but in this case, being only a 10 day simple, it is already turned up too. So daily bow tie is improving. Ideally, I like to see, by the way, bow ties and other transitional patterns off of major transitions like this bow tie up here off all time highs. That's very significant. A little bit more significant than this bow tie up here at these fairly high levels. So for rollover all time highs for a bottom, ideally multi-year lows, which I think we're right at multi-year lows. So that's pretty good, but it's not like 10 year lows or something like that, but certainly improving. So daily bow tie, not quite yet. Let's take a look at the weekly and you can see the weekly 10 grade, 20 grade, 30, this nice bull market run we had back in 2021 coming into 2022. We stay green for a long, 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 long time. Now, I would never sell a market just because it's overbought. But one thing to watch is by the time you get 80, 90 days of upside weekly Landry light, sometimes the bull market can run its course when that occurs. So it, do pay attention to this histogram down here. But obviously, let price in general take you out. But you can see market began to meander, consolidate. We turned yellow here. And what's really cool about this particular signal here with the bow tie crossing, although it wasn't a tie crossing, it took a while to cross. And I find it interesting that the market gave you a long time to get out. It went from green to yellow, meaning caution, before it went to red. And I just think that's, that's really cool. I know I'm a nerd and you probably want to party with me. But anyway, I just think that's really, really cool. And by the way, one thing that I often say is you have time to get out when a bear market happens, but you don't have unlimited time. But you did have a long time, at least in this particular case, to get out. Now, I wouldn't sit around and wait forever for a weekly signal, but if we get one, it would certainly be a positive thing. If you go in and study, and I'm, I, know, I know I've done some presentations on this, but go back and study the presentation that uh, those that I did on around the pandemic with the bow ties, with the weekly bow ties, the weekly bow tie signal was very late, but we did have other signals in the works. All right, so what about a TFM 10% buy? No, we don't have that yet. So you can see the parameters I have set here at 90 and 50. So that's 50 weeks, and the line's going to draw at 90% of the close. So that green line is 90% of that close. If you close below the green line... And the 50-week moving average, that's a sell signal. So our last sell signal was there. And if you look back, the high was 43 weeks ago. So this green line will start to drop once we hit 50 weeks, okay? So we'll drop to that closing high. That'll be the highest and then that one. So what's going to happen is you can see the moving average is starting to 
catch up with price, that green line, sometimes I call it the buy line, will begin to catch up with price. So in about seven weeks, that's going to start coming down and get lower and lower and lower. And the great thing is if you get in a prolonged bear market, which this one so far is starting to become fairly prolonged, the buy signals will start dropping lower and lower and get you back in to the market basis system at much, much lower levels. Now, keep in mind that bigger picture market timing is a good thing, but we always begin with the database. And I look at 2,000 stocks every night, and I'm looking for individual setups. Now, if I find a long side setup, ideally, I want that setup to back. Recently, we've had some gold stocks look pretty good. Gold itself, the commodity looked okay. The overall sector looked okay, but none of those stocks triggered. So entries are very crucial and often, not all the time, but often, especially lately, will help to keep you out of troubles. Now, here's something that's a little bit counterintuitive, but as the market improves, we're going to see shorts set up initially, but hopefully, if the market continues to improve, let's hope that first, but if it continues to improve, we won't get triggers on these setups. The mystery chart I showed you earlier was a short, but if the market keeps going higher, it might not trigger. Now, again, if you need to reach me, DaveLeonard.com slash contact. And if you would like the slides from this show, all of the shows combined, a, a tracking sheet for your trades, and a whole bunch of other goodies, including all three of my books in PDF format, go to DaveLeonard.com slash stock chart. So I want to thank everybody for watching, and may the trend be with you. Hey guys, Dave Keller here with StockCharts.com. Thanks so much for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, and we hope you did, hit the like button right below. Also, we have so much new content every day. Consider subscribing to the channel. Just hit the subscribe button in the video or right below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Have a fantastic day.